What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Money Grand National Series here on NBCSN. We are at Texas Motor Speedway for the first of two races at this track. It is another companion weekend with the MG Cup Series. And surprisingly, not as many MG Cup drivers are in the field as there normally are. So, uh, yeah, this is pretty interesting. As the 21 of Kevin Harvick, of course he's racing, as well as Carl Edwards, um, is going to lead the field to the green. As we head through turns 3 and 4, getting ready to get this thing underway. Got the 52 of Brad T to his outside. The 48 of Shane Mill starting right behind him. Along with the 60 of Carl Edwards starting fourth. The 10 of John Andretti rounds out the top five. And Ron Hornaday Jr. starts sixth on his outside. Pace car is in. Coming into the quad oval. The race is about to begin. Green flag in the air. We are racing at that point. One and two for the first time, Harvick with a pretty sizable lead as we come out of turn two. And already side by side for P2 behind them. As here comes Shane Mule, here comes John Andretti looking for second place. And Andretti on the bottom making it three wide here. He's going to get there. It looks like everybody further back is making it through as well. We've completed our first lap under green kind of uh, rare for races that these types of tracks with this package so that's an accomplishment there but I don't think we'll make I don't think we're gonna last too much longer with the way we're racing here and there we go the minute, the minute I said it there goes Todd Cleaver into the wall and Val Wolf nowhere to go Chris Mack sneaks through but watched his teammate and friend get involved in that one. Todd Cleaver, rear end of that car is completely destroyed. Heavy damage on that race car. Let's see what happened to him here. Oh, Randy LaJoy tried to sneak in underneath. There's not enough room. Oh, poor Ashton Lewis got collected in that. As well as John Wood in the 47 and then Val Wolf. Side by side with their teammate back there. Couldn't get to the bottom. Had nowhere to go. Couldn't slow that car down in time. It's hard to slow a car down in the turn really, without spinning it out. Are we wrecking under caution? Oh my goodness, we're wrecking under caution. Shane Meal was just fighting for the lead. Well, outside the top 10 and now is involved in the crash under the yellow. A couple cars locking up back here and more damage to that 47 car. Alright, well, things are getting crazy here from Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas, and that includes the caution shenanigans. Here we go. Green flag back in the air. Harvick leads us back down into turn one. Carl Edwards right behind him. How about the, the one of Jason Keller running third? And look at that huge run from John Andretti. Checks up as he tucks in behind the one, but now hops in inside to the or of the number one car, and here comes the 11 of Paul Menard as well. Kyle Busch further back as well. Chad Blunt, three wide, three, one and two. Off the of turn two, they are gonna sort that out before it causes any problems. Now, we have made a slight change to this package since there, as you can see, there are no safer barriers on this track yet. Uh, they are planning on installing them after probably next season. As looks like um, that's where the original plans to kind of revamp, reconfigure the track were uh, scheduled for anyways. So to take things a little bit easier here, they're going to 
let the cars get a little bit spread out, not be all bunched on top of each other, and hope to minimize the hard heads and big wrecks. But the way they're racing, I doubt that'll really fix much. Perfect though, still hanging on to the lead. Here comes Chad Blunt with a run underneath the 60 of Edwards, and he's got the 11 following him through. That's Paul Menard and John Andretti. How about Johnny Sauter as well? Sauter and Andretti. Menard. Lots of drivers that have been fast but not really able to show show up towards the front of the field and uh, kind of have some bad luck here starting to make their way to the front of the pack so it's nice to see how about David Green working his way up he started mid-pack and has now worked his way up inside the top 10 Shane Beal hanging on to a top 10 spot he's got some damage from that incident under caution and here's the 57 Ryan Vickers. Jason Keller. Oh my goodness. Kyle Bush. Blocking Jason Keller down the back stretch and now hops in in front of him there. Keller gets hit with some dirty air. Had to check up a little bit. He was about to wash up the track trying to get a good arc into the corner now. Still not quite able to get it turned quite as good. You see the 57 of Brian Vickers being affected by dirty air. He slides up the racetrack a little bit. And that allows Kyle Busch to get in underneath him. Dirty air not really as big of a factor on these types of tracks. And especially not in this game. But it's still there. It still exists. And you're seeing it coming to play now. See Paul Menard having to check up. He was right behind Harvick. He was getting hit with a ton of dirty air there. Had to check up big time. Here comes the 22, the 60, the 7, the 21, all right there. And it looks like Randy LaJoy is going to take him three wide. He does. Where's the 21 going to go? Harvick chooses the middle. Let's Gonna try to get to the bottom, but there goes Paul Menard. One car slow on the track. Looks like either exiting pit road or possibly having an issue. And that's the 35 of Regan Smith. And he is having a problem with that car. Trying to bring it back around the pit road. Be right back after this. Welcome back to the Money Grand National Series here from Texas. After a really short break compared to the ones we normally take. But the racing is just so exciting here. Always been one of the best tracks in Money Car and just living up to it today. So yeah, I've got another exciting and crazy race they're still managing to get bunched up just not quite as much i mean there's a little bit of separation as you can see oh chris mack passing them in the grass what in the world passing the grass from the 86 he was diving down low to avoid the slow car that's ashton lewis a lap down lap traffic does really throw a monkey wrench into things at this track they usually pick a lane and the leaders have to slam on the brakes to avoid them. And it really jumbles things up. But yeah, it's a little bit of separation. You're not seeing everybody being all bunched up like they usually are on these starts and restarts. Usually the back half of the field can stick with the front half and get bunched back up with the draft. But a, a slight change to the package makes the where you have to really stay close. 
can't get too far behind, otherwise he'll lose this wrath. And Chris Mack with a huge run through the corner. My goodness, Danny O'Quinn doesn't even know what's coming for him. He's going to dive in on the knee. So Chris Mack leads the second pack. Someone is ready. Better be careful back there. Might lose this wrath. I think he'll be fine, though. They're side by side in front of him. That'll help him out. Harvick, though, still leading. He's led a majority of the laps, if not all of the laps so far. Brian Vickers in the mix as well here. And Dreddy Bush Keller all taking it easy. Where's the backs? They start to get more and more aggressive here towards the front. Oh, contact! And that's going to result in a wreck. Hard hit! Oh my goodness! Menard on his roof. Wild wreck, Menard still driving it somehow. Look out, everybody trying to avoid, and it's gonna result in more carnage here in turn three. Tim Sauter gets turned into the outside wall. Aaron Fike goes in with him. And the caution comes out again. With the way they were racing, we knew it was gonna break out eventually. And I don't believe inside wall safer barriers were in their plans but they might want to add that because that was a hard hit to the inside wall for Menard and Kenny Wallace see Wallace noses in Menard goes in with the driver's side though both drivers hit the wall with the door mainly and then Menard's car goes up into the air from the impact and rolls on its roof Randy LaJoy bounced off the wall. He was able to save it, but he's got some significant damage on both sides of that car. Menard sliding back up the racetrack. Our starts to turn back over. Bang! Goes into the wall with the roof. That's a scary wreck, but luckily he's okay. He was able to drive it away, so that lets us know he's alright, but... Man, this is the scariest part right here. Seeing that 22 car sitting driver's side door facing traffic. And drivers coming in at full speed trying to avoid. They do a great job getting on the brakes. And trying to slow down and getting low and trying to avoid it. They go down under the apron. That was a big mistake. But there was really no other place to go for the guys on the bottom line. And they stack up and the round goes to... 43 into 36 and a hard hit for Tim Sauter. But luckily it slowed down quite a bit before he impacted the wall. Sauter slammed on the brakes to avoid Aaron Bike. And then here comes Dave Blaney. Just comes in way too hot. Pushes Sauter in the bike. Turns both of them around. And Sauter eats the outside wall. He only hit it going at about 80. So that's pretty good compared to what it could have been. And just gets grazed by Curtis Davis going by in a zero. So now that we've broken everything down as far as what happened in that wreck, let's go ahead and Hop back into it here. Chris Mack is now in second place. So I believe he and Harvick stayed out. We got a bunch of slower cars restarting in front of the field. Green flag back in the air. We are racing once again. Where's Harvick going to go? He's got nowhere to go. Here comes Chris Mack now way low all the way to the bottom to take the lead. Using the lap cars as a pick. Oh, but then gets held up. He's going to have to go high. He avoids. Oh, and 
Tracy gets into the back of a big crash on the back straightaway. Caution's out. Once again, Mac back across the racetrack. Hard hit for Aaron Fike and Tim Sauter. Oh my goodness, and a hard hit for Chris Mack, too. Caution is out once again. Another scary wreck. Takes out This one takes out a bunch of cars. And my goodness, what just happened? Chris Mack going for the lead. Gets checked up by a slower, a lapped car. Has to go high to avoid running into the back of the 49 and cut down the track right in front of him. Gets tight, trying to avoid the wall. He's up out of the groove. The car starts to slide just a little bit. He saves it. He's gonna keep it straight. But the car does drift down the track just a little bit. He's got it straightened back up, but meanwhile, Paul Tracy coming up the track and they just kind of meet right in the middle. And around goes the 86. Well, not quite around, but down into the double zero of Johnny Sauter and a 10 of John Andretti. Two drivers who we mentioned had bad luck earlier in this race. Oh, that's a hard hit for Andretti. Mentioned they have not had the best of luck this season. And now, one time it looked like they were going to have a good run. Not the case that 86 car you see I'm sliding back up the racetrack and it's a hard hit we'll go on board if the red flag is in the air we'll go on board with uh, a couple drivers here mainly Chris Mack that was a really hard impact and something very scary to see hate you hate to see crashes like this I mean that was nose to nose on the impact there head on on board with the 86. Here we go. Checks up a little bit and nowhere for these guys to go. Oh, man. Tried his best to fight it. Tried to hang it on to that race car after it bounced off the wall. It looks like it broke the suspension a little bit. It was trying to downshift and Slow that car down. The car just started to slide on him. Goes back into the wall. At this point, he's on the brakes at this point. He knows he's lost it. The car bounces off the wall. Goes back up the track. And I feel like if he didn't bounce off the wall right there, he would have been fine. And then AJ Fike peeks out of line at the worst possible moment. He comes out from behind that 78 and just sees the 86's front bumper right as he right as he's about to slam in on poor Aaron Fike nothing he could do nowhere to go he's going board with Harvick here And Paul Tracy's defense. He's got Harvick right behind him. He can't just slam on the brakes. And he's got cars to his inside. So he can't turn hard left either. There's really nowhere for him to go. Nothing he can do. And... We know he's not quite used to this style of racing. It comes from open wheel racing. And usually it's not quite as close as this type of racing is. And kind of in the middle there nothing he could do wrong place wrong time and it turned out to be disastrous for a lot of cars but watch it's the 86 bounces off the inside wall comes sliding back up the racetrack the 43 tries to go low nowhere he can go didn't even know oh my goodness and then nowhere for Tim Sauter to go look at all the debris flying off those cars. Sauter had already committed to the high lane. 86 came back across the track, collected the 43, and there was nowhere for him to go as the 43 slid up the track after that impact there. So just a 
wrong place, wrong time scenario for AJ fight or Aaron fight and uh, Tim Sauter takes both of them out of the race. They were just in that last race wreck too. Anyways, green flag is uh, about to fly, so let's uh, go ahead and jump back into it here. Green flag back in the air. Had to take an extra pace lap, but we're good. Edwards, your new leader, but here comes Harvick right back down on the inside to retake the lead. Here comes Stedman Marlin with a push from Kyle Bush contact. And he saves it. More contact. Kyle Bush not lifting. He's all over the back bumper of that dirty car. Here comes Jason Leffler to the inside of David Green. He's going to get that spot. Green's going to fall back. He's going to fall way back. Oh, and almost takes the nose off that 54 car. That would have resulted in another big wreck. Caution! Right as I say it, we got one wrecking. A, a couple wrecking on the front straightaway. Paul Tracy's car is destroyed. And Shane Meals involved. Let's see what happened here. Oh. Tapped out for a second, but we're good. Okay. It looks like Shane Mule might have just driven through him, but at the, at the same time, I don't know. We'll have to see. Paul Tracy running him kind of low. Gives him a lane, but the 48 just kind of gets into the back of him. And looks like at this point, they're just kind of stuck together. The 48's on the apron. is shooting them back up the track, and around they go. Yeah, I'd say that's all on Shane Mule. Just kind of being a little bit impatient and then kind of gets instant karma there. So 34 slides up and pancakes him between his car and the wall. Kind of sandwiched him, I mean, not pancakes. And, well, it did pancake the right side of that car. And poor Curtis Davis, nowhere to go. Just kind of gets collected. All right, so caution's out once again. Flag back in the air. We are racking them up double file once again for this restart. And I mean, we are past the halfway point, so why not? And uh, let's see if this will end well. It probably won't. They're already bouncing off of each other. But the racing, for the most part, once we get to like a long run, it's been kind of clean and spread out for the most part. So. They were willing to take that chance. We are kind of in a, a testing phase to see if double file restarts will work. And, oh, there they go. Kyle Bush into the wall. Round he goes. Look out. Where are they going to go? Into the wall with them. Oh, they're still wrecking. Aggie Vadovich goes into the wall. Scott, uh, not Scott, Jay Sauter in the 01. Randy Lejoy. It's not been a good day for the Sauter brothers. All three of them taken out. Three separate wrecks. There was so much going on. Let's uh, see what happened. Kyle Bush just kind of got hooked. A little bit of a taste of his own medicine. He's been doing that to other people all day. Just kind of driving through him on the corner exit. And there's Mike Harmon into the wall as well. Whoa, look out, Curtis Davis coming in hot. What happened to Randy LaJoy? There's nowhere to go. That five car bouncing around, getting hit all over the place, straightens out, and just. And then the 49 of Derek Cope just turns. Aggie Vidovic. I'm not sure what that was all about. Oh, man. 52 Brad T going into the wall. Oh, and Jerry Robertson getting hooked as well. By the 12, Joel Kaufman. A lot of stuff going on here. Is that even a real person? Oh, he is. 
Jesus, his name's spelled wrong. <laughs> Anyways, the green flag's back in the air. Um, has been for a while. Oh, this isn't going to end well. My goodness, that was cutting it really close. Johnny Sauter, who's still in the race somehow. Just kind of taking a chance there, I guess. And we're three wide once again. They are bouncing off each other. Yeah, this, we might, I don't think we're done wrecking yet. Comes to 77. Chad Blunt is a man on a mission. He keeps making it 3 wide. He's driving past people left and right. He does not care. Gets by Tracy Hines in the 14. Harvey Sadler off the pace. He's just running fourth. Looks like he might have an issue. He's trying to hurry up and get down to the bottom of the track and nobody letting him in. Looks like uh Maybe not an issue, just getting freight train there and trying to hurry up and get back down to the bottom. So we got two separate packs again. Now Kevin Harvey has driven away from the rest of the field. Nobody's working together to try to run him down, so looks like this might it might stay this way unless they can get together and work their way back up there somehow. The Harvick is too fast. Look at the run Mark McFarlane got through the middle. Close, almost a wreck there, but luckily they made it out. Harvey Sattler about hooked the 14. apron is Shane Meal. He's also having a no, he's just rejoining the track. He went to pit road. I thought he was having an issue, but you know, able to keep that car rolling. John Andretti about turn Kyle Bush, but luckily he didn't. Here comes Carl Edwards. Here comes Jason Leffler. And he's got a push from Hornaday. Here comes Hornaday. Trying to make it an RCR 1-2. Chad Blunt entering pit road. Shane Mule exiting pit road once again. Looks like, looks like still having an issue with that car. And Nearly a wreck. Oh, car slow on the front stretch. Jerry Robertson in the grass. What is going on here? Issues for the 78. He's going to have to come to a stop here. He's going to have to bring that car to a halt. It's not going anywhere. He stopped on the apron. Will it bring out a caution? I don't think it will. He's out of the way. and There he goes.
So now they've caught Harvick a little bit. But every time they get up there, they start passing each other. And Harvick pulls away again. So it'll have to be a game of patience. You can ride around behind somebody and push them the longest and possibly get them a shot at winning this race. I don't think anyone, I think they're all, they're all fighting for points, they're all fighting for each spot, and that's allowing Harvick to drive away, but now that they're doing that behind Leffler as well, he's kind of pulled away as well here, and he's in the draft of Harvick. So now three wide behind them, Jason Leffler running P2, here comes Johnny Sauter clearing for third, and I thought he was out of it earlier. Contact! The round goes Lamar. End of the 14 of Tracy Hines and collecting Ron Hornaday. That's going to bring out the caution. Oh boy. Late caution once again. That changes everything. Harvick's going to have to defend big time on his restart. Jason Leffler, usually the outside line, gets a better restart here. Leffler's going to have a shot. Okay, here we go. Or maybe Johnny Sauter can get a good restart and possibly make it three wide. We're about to find out. It'll be four laps to go here from Texas Motor Speedway. Things are about to get crazy. Pace car is in. Here we go. Green flag back in the air. We are racing once again here from Texas. Harvick gets a good restart. That might be all she wrote. Side by side behind them for second. Johnny Sauter, can he clear? Jason Leffler off turn two. Looks like he will. He's going to slide up in front of that 38. But here comes Bernie Lamar with a run down the back straight away. That 77 car is fast, but not fast enough. Sauter back down to the bottom, but he's got no help. These guys are going to have to work together if they want to win. Or at least keep Harvick from winning. Johnny Sauter's got some damage to the rear end of that car. That's going to slow him down a little bit. So it's going to be hard for him to get up there by himself. Side by side behind him though. I think that might be all she wrote. Here comes Hornaday. To the bottom. Taking it three wide. Leffler's coming. That 38 car is fast. But he's gonna get is he gonna get there? He's gotta run on a double zero. We know Sauter's gonna fight back. I don't know. Jason Leffler has a huge run. Sauter though put the car into the perfect spot to hold him up a little bit. White flag in the air for Kevin Harvick. One more time around. down the back stretch for the final time. After three and four, it is all Kevin Harvick here from Texas Motor Speedway. Another dominant victory here in the Money Grand National Series. Kevin Harvick wins at Texas. And Leffler was able to steal P2 there at the end. And it's Johnny Sauter, Carl Edwards, and Ron Hornaday running out the top. Five. Whew, that's going to do it. They, they made it uh, to the end without another 
catastrophic accident. So that's uh, that's a win in my book. Hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. See y'all next time. And until then, peace.